Their circumstances dictated what they will believe. Their depression, their hardship, their sorrow spoke louder than the Word of God. And they could not believe. That's why their bondage persisted. Their bondage persisted. But we are not, we do not have anguish of spirit. We have joy in our spirit. Amen? We have joy in our spirit. Obedience is not difficult. It is easy to obey God. Everyone say, it is easy to obey God. It is fun to obey God. See, you have to believe that. Your spirit loves to obey God. Now, your flesh may not like to obey something that God told you to do. But don't identify with the flesh. Identify with the spirit. I love to obey God. I love to do the things that God tells me to do. Not only do I love it, I can do it. I can do it. And even if you didn't go to school or you didn't finish school, it's okay. Look at Adam. Adam did not go to college, but he was able to name all the animals. He had revelation. More about that in coming weeks. So what am I saying? Look at this, Exodus 7, 4. But Pharaoh will not heed you, God told Moses, so that I may lay my hand on Egypt and bring my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. Sometimes, even with all of our confession, our situation doesn't seem to change immediately. It took 10 plagues before Pharaoh said, go. It took 10 plagues. But when did the deliverance take place? As soon as God spoke it, it was done. In time, it needed to unfold. Sometimes, things don't always happen the way we expect. But we need to understand that God has bigger plans. Bigger, his plans are bigger than your expectations and bigger than your sense of comfort. Sometimes God is trying to work through the back door. Just look, I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to do it. In fact, in my mind, it's done. But I also want to unleash 10 plates. So you're going to have to stay with me and walk with me through this. Because I want to show my power. I want to show my glory. I want to show my mighty right arm. I want to show my strength. I want to show you Israelites what your God can do. Because you're going to need to know who I am while you're in the wilderness and when you enter the promised land. Because you've got bigger enemies there than the Egyptians. You better know who I am. So I have delivered you. Now let's work it out. Ten plates, guys. And that's what he did. That's what he did. Sometimes things don't go according to your schedule. But when were you delivered? As soon as God spoke it. It was done. God was going to get to Exodus chapter 12, even though this is only chapter 7, chapter 12 and the deliverance took place. He was going to get there. See? But we're still in chapter 7. He wanted to work things out. So when things are not going as quickly as you like, you know what you need to do? Rejoice. How often? In the Lord, always. And again I say, rejoice. That's why almost every Sunday I like to go, this is the day that the Lord has made. When I wake up in the morning, I still say that to myself. I love that verse. This is the day I, I remind myself that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. It's a choice that I make. I will. I can choose to be depressed, but I choose to rejoice. Oh, but you've got problems. I know. I'll still rejoice. But you've got all of these deadlines. I'll still rejoice. I got bills. You got bills. I'll still rejoice anyway. Because even if I don't rejoice, the bills are still there. So I might as well rejoice. Right? Then you walk in the joy of the Lord. You use less facial muscles. Right? You don't have as many wrinkles. Hair doesn't get white very quickly. They don't uh, take a vacation from your head quickly. You know, and stuff like that. So rejoice. If the bill is there, the bill is there. But God says, it's pain. So rejoice. The reality is it's pain. 
Now, Lord, now God has a problem. His problem is bringing the money to you. That's not your problem. The Bible says the blessings overtake. So I'm not looking for the blessing. The moment you start looking for the blessing, the moment you start looking for money, you're in the flesh. What you need to look for, the Bible says, is seek what? First. The kingdom of God. The king, that's what you seek. Don't seek money. The kingdom of God is not money. The kingdom of God is not a husband or a wife. Don't seek a husband or wife. Seek the kingdom. The husband or wife will come. The bills will get paid. The, 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 the needs will be met. You seek the kingdom. That's what you do. Never go after money. Never go after wealth. Because then you go in the flesh. And when you're in the flesh, you will worry. And when you worry, you're not in faith. When you're not in faith, bondage comes. So you don't want to go that way. Amen? Amen. Now look at this. I'm going to bring them out of the land of Egypt by great judgment. The word great means intense. This is going to be intense, but the judgment is not for you. It's for the world. He has judged the world, the Bible says. That's why, I don't know if I brought it down here. Anyway, Matthew 4, 8 and 9. Again, the devil. See, look at this. Just because, before we read this, just because, you know, sometimes we ask, have you ever asked this? Why is it that the wicked are more prosperous than I am? Why is it that they have more money than me? Why is it that they don't know God, but they seem to be having a good life? Have you ever asked that, or is it just me? You have, okay. See, here I am, I'm serving God, but I'm the one without the money, I'm the one without the car, I'm the one without the house, I'm the one without a wife, I'm the one without a husband, I'm the one without wealth, I'm the one with all the bills. I'm the one getting kicked out of the apartment, and I'm serving God. You know, and it seems like they are the ones more blessed. Uh, you know what? A hard life. You know, we think that, uh, we think that you know, if, if you're not walking with God, you should be poor, you should be this and that and everything. But there are so many rich people that don't know God. They don't know God, but they're wealthy. It's like they can do anything they like, anytime they want. They can take a vacation anywhere they like. They can, they can go to a hotel and pay $10,000 a room per night and they'll stay there for three weeks and they don't care and we look for the budget pension house 200 pesos a day when you stretch you hit the walls on both sides <laughs> see they go to the expensive restaurants order wine that costs 40,000 a bottle and here you are looking for Jollibee and McDonald's you're not from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. 